Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it's my joy to visit with you today. I'm so touched by the Wesley family as they surrounded the Landrum family following Deb's unexpected death last week. Please, my friends, know your prayers, cards, visits, and other tangible expressions of love have helped Ray, Ben, Barb, and the entire family in their time of grief. Deb's memorial service will be this Sunday at 3 p.m. here at Wesley Church in Marysville. There will be a time of visitation from 1 to 3 p.m. The service will be live streamed on both Facebook and YouTube. We know how much Deb has touched so many, and the grief that all of us are experiencing is profound. But when we gather together on Sunday, we will celebrate a life well lived and acknowledge the many ways that Deb served her church and her community. Please continue to keep all of the family in your prayers and thoughts. For reflection today, I begin with, some, with a single verse from Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now many of you are saying, hmm, that rings a bell. Well, Amy Grant wrote the words and Michael W. Smith wrote the music in 1984 to a song uh, that expands on this verse and is a favorite in many churches. But both clearly, clearly both the psalmist and songwriters remind us of this important truth found in those lyrics. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, I think I've lost my way. Still you're there right beside me, and nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Well, this song was in my head this week, and then I ran across a recent post by Rick Warren that basically shared the, the how-to for making God's word the lamp unto our feet. I love the truth that he presented so simply has reminded us that the Word of God can only grow and guide our lives if we feed on it. It reminds us that knowing what to do and actually doing it are two different things. To help us have the discipline needed, Rick reminded us that the Bible is our soul food and that you can't be healthy unless you regularly feed on the truth of God's Word. How can we make this happen? Well, let me share with you what Rick said. He said, you can actually use your hand to help you remember how to use the Bible to grow in spiritual maturity. You feed on the word by doing six things. You hear God's word, that's your pinky finger. You read it, that's your ring finger. You study it, that's your middle finger. You memorize it, that's your pointer finger. And then you meditate on it, that's your thumb. Your palm, the palm represents applying God's word to your life. He goes on to say that it's important that you do all six of these things as you feed on God's word. If, you, if the only spiritual input you get is hearing the word of God at church, then you won't have a very strong grip as you try to hang on just with your pinky. But he also pointed out that, you know, we forget almost 95% of everything we hear within 72 hours. Satan would be able to steal your joy so easily as if you, all you did was hear. Rather, he says, when we do all six things, you'll have a firm, strong grip on God's word. No one will be able to take it away from you. And you'll find yourself growing towards spiritual maturity and receiving the blessings that come with it. So my friends, let's remember that when we look at our hand this week, ask God to, to just let it poke your memory and to remind all of us to get into God's word in a very intentional way. Let's ask God to help us grow in our faith as we dig deeper to understand his word. And let's ask God to brighten the light onto our path as we faithfully live out the truths we find in the Bible. Amen. Got some things to share with you about upcoming activities. Um, for the near future, Sunday services are going to continue to be held in the sanctuary. 
Each week, of course, we continue to live stream our services on both YouTube and Facebook. We thank you for your understanding and cooperation. Mom to Mom will resume uh, in gatherings uh, this week on August 11th at the picnic area above the back parking lot, weather permitting, beginning at 6.30. Everyone is encouraged to bring a side dish or dessert to share. All moms with children of any age are invited to enjoy a time of fellowship. Moms may choose to attend with or without the children. We certainly will have plenty of activities for the kids as well. And we're glad to be announcing that Men's Breakfast, a great time of fellowship for the men of our community, held on the last Tuesday of each month, is re-beginning this month at 9 o'clock. Their next breakfast will be August 31st. Remember, beginning at 9 a.m. The menu may change a little each month, but traditional fare, eggs, bacon, sausage, pancakes, etc., is offered. Donations are appreciated, but not required. Well, let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for revealing yourself through your word. Open our hearts and minds to your word and renew our hunger to feed on the truths found in the Bible. May they be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my friends, thank you for visiting with me today. We're going to talk again soon. May the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe.